Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, August the 6th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. DwyerVIP.com, a free site. Let's talk about a fight that, quite frankly, to me, is one of the biggest fights I have come across in the several years that I've followed boxing. A fight between the WBC heavyweight champion. Folks, he's unbeaten. The record, quite frankly, is historical. He's now trying to add some crown jewel scalps to his resume. And he's going up against the lineal heavyweight champion. Tyson Fury, unbeaten. Simply put, there are many analogies. And I mean many analogies you could draw between Tyson Fury and Cassius Clay slash Muhammad Ali. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say this. We recently had a fight, and by recent I mean in the last two years. That was a marquee heavyweight event, right? It was certainly one of the bigger events I've come across. And that was Anthony Joshua against Vladimir Klitschko, right? That was a huge event. In terms of just the excitement factor as the guys entered the ring, you felt the energy from the crowd. There was a big question hanging in the air. Was Anthony Joshua for real? After all, he had fought and beat guys like Charles Martin to get the heavyweight title. And here you had him going up against Vladimir Klitschko. In my opinion, a future boxing hall of famer, a guy who had held the belt for several years, a guy who had beaten several credible heavyweight champions, right? Guy who beat Alexander Povetkin, who's still in the mix. A guy who beat David Hay, right? Who had a belt at the time. A guy who beat Lehman Brewster, who had beaten him, right? Vladimir Klitschko, if you recall, avenged that loss in magnificent fashion. Right, a guy who beat several unbeaten guys, Kubrat Pulev, who's still in the mix. Right, Vladimir Klitschko gave him his first loss. I believe Marius Wok, Vladimir Klitschko gave him his first loss. Now, that match was exciting. In my opinion, it delivered. But understand, that match doesn't approach this match. Right, that match had a Vladimir Klitschko who had been out the ring for a year. A Vladimir Klitschko who would have lost to Vladimir Klitschko in his prime. A Vladimir Klitschko who had been beaten by Tyson Fury. Right, understand this fight between Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, unbeaten. One of the heaviest punches in heavyweight history. And Tyson Fury, who is younger than Wilder, doesn't feature a guy about to turn 40. Right? This features two fighters in their prime. Let me point out, there is a big question hanging over this fight. Tyson Fury. Will he be rusty for this one, right? He will have fought two times. Two times. Before he steps in the ring with Wilder. The question is whether the version of Tyson Fury who enters the ring is going to be close to the sharp precise Tyson Fury 
who made Vladimir Klitschko look like an amateur. Folks, I want you to go back and revisit that masterpiece. Fury's in such control that in front of Klitschko, Fury at one point puts both hands behind his back. The foot movement and the feints have Vladimir Klitschko disarmed. Contrast Fury's masterpiece with Anthony Joshua getting off the canvas and all of us wondering why Klitschko wasn't able to close the show. Understand, Vladimir Klitschko that night has another heavyweight champion, his brother Vitaly in his corner. And the two guys are discussing it as the fight's going on. The consensus in the Klitschko corner is, look, don't rush it. This guy has too many muscles. He doesn't have the stamina to go the distance. Right? No, no. This, this Wilder Fury fight far exceeds, in my opinion, the Joshua Klitschko fight. Right? Far exceeds it. It has even extra luster because we know now that Deontay Wilder wants to be great and was willing to travel across the Atlantic to fight Anthony Joshua. And we figured out that Anthony Joshua wanted to fight someone else, right? He's in the UK. He didn't want to fight the lineal world heavyweight champion in the UK, Tyson Fury, who's been calling him out. And he didn't want to fight unbeaten Deontay Wilder in his backyard, right? This is after a, and let's be real here, very lackluster performance, very lackluster performance against Joseph Parker. Can I dare to say this too? Dylan White, at times, looked much more dominant against Joseph Parker than Anthony Joshua did at any time over 12 rounds. Now, to the gamblers, I'll just say this. Pay very close attention to this Wilder Tyson Fury fight. I'll say this. I think we know that if a boxing match breaks out here, Tyson Fury likely lifts the WBC title, right? If it comes down to boxing, I'll take the guy with the better footwork. I'll take the guy who's ambidextrous. I'll take the righty who out of a southpaw stance throws a better right-handed jab, his offhand, than Wilder throws his left jab, right? Tyson Fury is a savant when it comes to boxing, right? Folks, he boxed the shoes off of reigning champion Vladimir Klitschko in a fight in which he was the underdog. Tyson Fury has never lost. Some of my favorite Tyson Fury film is when Derek Chisora, who's still around, who just beat Carlos Tackham. I've heard from you in emails, right? I know many people want me to do a Derek Chisora, Carlos Tackham film. Chisora looked good, right? Dare I say, Chisora had better moments against Carlos Tackham than did Anthony Joshua. Right? Understand there's a moment in the Chisora Tyson Fury fight where Chisora, Del Boy, highly regarded at the time, gets inside on Tyson Fury. And against this tall guy on the inside, Del Boy couldn't do a thing. Right? Tyson Fury, the secret to him is he can fight you outside, he can fight you inside. He's a switch. Right, this is the heavyweight version, folks, of Terence Crawford. Now he's fighting a guy who we've seen hard punches. 
at heavyweight. Right? Sonny Liston hits Floyd Patterson in the ribs. You would have thought Floyd Patterson got shot. Right? Joe Lewis was a guy who ended fights with guys not cold. Right? George Foreman had a huge punch. If you want to see it at its peak, look at Foreman against Ken Norton. Right? But I'll say this. I've never in my life watched a fight where a guy hit another guy on the chin. A guy with a chin gets hit on the chin, goes down, gets up, then starts complaining to the referee that he was hit on the back of the head. Right? Tyson Fury fights are interesting because, excuse me, Deontay Wilder fights are interesting because he hit so hard that when Arthur Spielka hit the canvas, I was seriously worried about whether he was going to be able to open his eyes again. Right? That right hand is lethal, but it's just the right hand, right? You saw a tough guy, Luis Ortiz, started the fight fast. I thought he was winning the rounds. I understand the judges saw it differently. Okay, fine. I'll leave the actual judging to you, the fight fan, right? Because we're the public that they're trying to sell their results to. I thought Luis Ortiz starts fast. Ortiz simply put is one of the most skilled guys at heavyweight. Folks, he's a southpaw. He's coming in at an angle. He's not afraid of Deontay Wilder. He's there to take the title. He's not running away from Wilder. He's not trying to, you know, stay away and just last a few rounds. No, Ortiz comes to take the title. You're in Madison Square Garden, a boxing mecca. The fans sense it. Then, of course, you know the rest, right? Ortiz, great chin, gets hit on it by Deontay Wilder, goes down. Folks, that's when you know you're dealing with a puncher. By the way, Ortiz is so confused when he gets off the canvas that the referee comes over to him to say, hey, are you all right? Look at the film. And Ortiz is shrugging his shoulders. I don't think the guy knew what happened. <laughs> I think the guy was in there one minute. The next minute he's on the cab. It's like, what? what's going on here? He couldn't understand the power. Let's also talk about the personalities. Right? And for the gamblers, just understand the play I like. It's Wilder by knockout, hedged with... Tyson Fury simply to win. I'm expecting Fury to be an underdog. Right? I think Fury has a great chance at a stoppage. I think Fury has a great chance at a dominant performance where he wins eight or nine rounds. I understand. In this bodybuilder age, right? People see Fury with a belly that Let's face it, we've seen in the past, Buster Mathis, for crying out loud. You know, Larry Holmes was never going to win a bodybuilding contest. Right? You've had big guys with some weight. And people are freaked out. Right? Forget the crisp timing. Folks, it's still crisp on Tyson Fury's jab. Right? Forget the fact that, okay, he fought an overmatched opponent, but wow, didn't he make that overmatched opponent look overmatched? No, people are focused on, instead, Tyson Fury's personality, which is prickly, which is inappropriate at times. Right, folks, th this is boxing. This isn't finishing school. Right? I'm not expecting a big charm offensive from the heavyweight champ. Right? When it comes to boxing, in my opinion, of all the fighters, their A-games, at heavyweight, I think this guy is on the top floor. Right? So let's talk about the personalities. You know about Tyson Fury. 
in my opinion, and I'm not a medical doctor, right? I know I'm going to hear about this. But in my opinion, Tyson Fury's bipolar, right? Before we had his recent challenges, I was here online saying be careful when you bet on Fury fights because I suspect there's some mental health concerns, right? Now, all I can say is this. I've spent a lot of time with some folks who face similar challenges, right? Some days the guy is bulletproof, right? I'm sure there are times when Tyson Fury is in the ring against a big time opponent and the courage is just flowing through his veins. Quite frankly, I believe a few heavyweight champions in history have been bipolar. You're watching fights and the guy doesn't even have his hands up. The guy is just biding his time. The guy's relying on his reflexes and his upper body against an opponent who has knocked out a lot of guys. Right? The guy gets excited. He can't stop talking. Kind of like me on occasion here online, right? I believe there's more mental health challenges in the sport of boxing than anyone wants to admit. Right? You track these guys' private lives and you'll find some of these fighters have a series of broken relationships. Some of them have a series of acts that one wonders how a guy involved in a public sport like boxing could even put himself in that situation, right? Yet a heavyweight champ, folks, who was out late at night one time, runs into a contender. The two guys have words. You know the rest. They take it to the alley. That scene in the Rocky movie, where Rocky is fighting Tommy Morrison out in the street someplace, that actually happened in real life, right? With a heavyweight champion. My point to you is just understand if Tyson Fury is on his walk into the ring there is a chance he could be flat. There is a chance he could be depressed. In which case it's going to be tough. You have a Hall of Famer who's very charming who talks about walking into one of the biggest fights of his life. And on the ring walk, he knew, he knew that he was flat that night. He knew that he was going to lose that night. Right? I believe in people's privacy. I'm not going to say the fighter's name. But let's just say there is a chance for Tyson Fury. That he's walking in the ring, and even though it's a heavyweight title fight, right? Even though he has the skills, in my opinion, to overwhelm Deontay Wilder, even though he has an unbeaten record on the line, there is a chance that something happens along the way. He walks into the ring and he's feeling unworthy. He says to himself, look, I don't want the adulation. We've had a guy have a nervous breakdown in a heavyweight title fight against a great champion who he had already beaten. Right? Google what I'm saying. Guy started crying in the ring. Refused to hit his opponent. Right? Just Google what I'm saying. I'm sure someone in the comment section to this video is going to remember who I'm talking about. As I've said, I believe there are multiple champions in history across several weight classes who have had mental health problems. But understand the flip side. If Tyson Fury is walking into the ring and he thinks, okay, I'm here to pick up the belt that they stripped from me. Right? I had some health problems. I showed up wearing a Batman suit to a... Uh, press conference. Yes, it actually happened, right? I had some problems. They took the belt I earned. 
Ali one time in an interview said, I won the belt that Jack Johnson had, that Jack Dempsey had, that Joe Lewis had, right? My words, not Ali's, but he basically says, how could anyone think that they could just take it away from me without a fight? Right? If Tyson Fury shows up with the swag that he showed up with against Klitschko, I'm not sure if anyone on the planet at heavyweight beats him. Right? Let's talk about Deontay Wilder. Now, Wilder is one of boxing's most interesting people outside of the brain. Right? This guy is the international man of mystery. I've watched Wilder for a while, and he's ahead of his crowd. I've seen him give interviews where the people around him don't know what the hell he's talking about. And he's dropping clever statements that the press doesn't even know to follow up on. So he beats... Luis Ortiz, right, who calls himself the real King Kong. And in his post-fight statements, Wilder looks at the crowd and says, you know, King Kong ain't got nothing on me. Right? No one reacts. Folks, that's a line Denzel Washington said in training day. <laughs> in a role that won him the Oscar, right? In fact, I believe that's the first time since Sidney Poitier that a black guy won the Oscar for Best Actor in the United States, right? Let me tell you another Wilder-ism, we'll call them, right? Wilder in interviews will drop the idea that his right hand is an Alabama slammer, right? He said it in several interviews. He says, you know, me and my Alabama slammer got the job done. And the interviewer's looking at him and the interviewer's confused, right? And Wilder, again, ahead of the crowd, doesn't say anything, right? Wilder just drops the line and looks at the guy. Now, for those who don't know, an Alabama slammer is a drink here in the United States, in the South, right? It's one ounce Southern Comfort. It's one ounce Slow Gin. It's one ounce Amaretto. It's two ounces Orange Juice. What Wilder's doing is reminding you that he's from the South. <laughs> and like an Alabama slabber, he packs a punch. Let me say this too. I heard some of these British guys, Eddie Hearn, Tony Bellew, Dylan White, Anthony Joshua, they're working on a storyline, right? It's a bogus one if you look at attendance at fights, but they're trying to say, look, nobody knows Wilder, right? They say, hey, Wilder's not pulling the crowds we're pulling. Um, you know, Wilder needs to fight Dylan White, right? Talk about someone nobody knows here in the States. Wilder needs to fight Dylan White to build a crowd <laughs> so that he's worthy of fighting Anthony Joshua, who, of course, doesn't want to fight Wilder, doesn't want to fight Tyson Fury, would rather fight Alexander Povetkin. As I've said here online, I hang around to boxing fans, not once have people said, you know, why is Joshua avoiding Prevetkin? When is Prevetkin going to get a shot at Joshua? Right? It's ridiculous. Well, let me just say this. People need to understand that Wilder is from the South, right? Wilder wants to shine a light on the South. Right. So Wilder is a guy who insists on fighting some of his fights in the South. When he fights in New York City, folks, he pulls a big crowd. They'd love to have Wilder for more fights in New York.
and places like that. But this is a Carlos Monzon guy, type guy, right? Monzon, same thing if you remember him in the 70s. He wanted to fight in Argentina, where he was from, right? On the way up, these guys made a vow to themselves that when they hit the big time, they were going to bring some of their events back home. So, yeah, he's literally creating the fight scene in Alabama. Understand, Wilder's well-connected, right? He's a Shelley Finkel guy. He's a Mark Breland guy. I believe both Finkel and Breland are from New York City. Right, he's an Al Heyman guy. <laughs> right? He's well connected, folks. The people around him have put on some of the biggest fights in history. But I believe what's going on here is Deontay Wilder is the boss. He's the one telling his crowd, look, I want this fight in Birmingham, Alabama. Right? Now, now how any of his rivals or wannabe rivals. Let's be clear here. Dylan White's a contender. Deontay Wilder's an unbeaten champion. How contenders are saying, look, the champ needs to fight me because nobody knows him is beyond me. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a concerted effort, right? The promoter's passing around talking points. It's kind of like a political debate where they say, hey, when you're on camera and the press is there, you need to try to convince Wilder to fight someone other than our heavyweight champion. <laughs> think, about, think about how ridiculous that is. So in this absurd political world, the unbeaten, I believe he's something like 40-0, folks, historical record, the unbeaten WBC heavyweight champion, has contacted the lineal champion. And those two guys want to fight. Expect a far bigger crowd than the experts expect. Expect a fight that's going to be sizzling. Right, folks? Luis Ortiz, who lost to Wilder? was just in L.A. on the Mikey Garcia car, right? Let me just say as an aside, Mikey, I know your father disagrees. I know he's a great trainer. I know your brother disagrees. I know he's a great trainer. From this seat, you need to take Errol Spence's title. We'll talk about that in another video. But understand, when they introduced Luis Ortiz in L.A., Right, and I'm calling Southern California, L.A. I understand the fight was in Carson or someplace like that. When they, when they announced Ortiz, the crowd cheered. It actually caught the announcers by surprise. Right, the crowd cheered. Because the people here in the United States value Deontay Wilder. We value the unbeaten WBC heavyweight champion. And Luis Ortiz was getting respect. He was getting love from the crowd for showing up ready to fight Wilder. Right? By the way, Ortiz looked magnificent. Second round KO against a guy who gave Joseph Parker problems. Right? Luis Ortiz is a magnificent heavyweight. He got hit with some Wilder right hands. Good night, Irene down three times. So the question here in this fight, style-wise, two tall guys, is what's Wilder going to do during the slow rounds? Because Wilder is a slow starter, right? I don't care what the judges have to say on the scorecards. I have two eyes. Wilder was losing the Luis Ortiz fight in the early rounds. Wilder was losing the Gerald Washington fight in the early rounds. Tyson Fury, while Wilder is trying to figure out the angles, Tyson Fury should be able to win, let's say, four of the first five rounds. In other words, at that point, he'll be three rounds away from the title with seven rounds to go. 
fights in the United States, let's say that in this trade war tariff world, let's say that a visiting fighter has to beat the champ by at least three rounds, okay, right? Fury will probably want to keep his foot on the gas. But the question is, if Fury starts fast and Fury's on a roll, Given that Tyson's, excuse me, given that Wilder's offensive weaponry is limited, spectacular, A plus straight right hand, right? But he can't really set it up. Fury's going to be thinking about different dynamics than Wilder, spacing, angles, lefty, righty, right? Fury's even a better fighter inside than Wilder. Right? The question is, will Wilder be able to get off a right hand? Folks, so far he has in all of his fights. Right? Even the fight where Bermain Stavern goes the distance. Bermain Stavern's in trouble. Right? So, put me among those who can't wait for this fight. Folks, in my opinion, this is as big as it gets. Understand, when Ali came back to fight Joe Frazier, the question was, was Ali still Ali? Had Ali who did fight, Jerry Quarry, tough dude. Right, Ali was in the ring before he fights Joe Frazier. Right, but the question was, hey, was Ali still the same fighter? And the answer was no. Right? Ali in the 60s has legs. He doesn't come close to having. In the 70s. Right? Ali is getting caught with shots that he wasn't getting caught with before he was out of the ring. Right? Now Tyson Fury, you know, Ali at least looked like he was in shape. Tyson Fury is a guy who balloons between fights, right? Now, heavyweights do age more slowly than everyone else. But the question is, the footwork we saw against Vladimir Klitschko. Folks, Klitschko looks like he's standing in sand, right? The movement we saw, the fluidity we saw, right? Is Tyson Fury still going to have that? It's an open question. And understand, we'll find out the answer to that early because if you can't move against Deontay Wilder, if your timing is off and you fall for one of Wilder's feints, you could end up like Audley Harrison, knocked out in your own backyard in the first round. This is a great fight. I encourage everyone to pay very close attention. Two guys with a legitimate claim to the heavyweight title. Two guys in their prime. One guy coming back from an absence, stripped of his titles. Think about it, folks. Fury was about to give Vladimir Klitschko a rematch. Right? Fury wasn't running away from anyone. The man he got the title from, he was about to give a rematch. And then his mental health fell apart. And in a sport where they call some champions emeritus, right? I remember Vitaly Klitschko for years was called champion emeritus. Right? In a sport where we coddle champions who have suffered injuries, right? Keith Thurman still has a share of the welterweight belt, folks. Right? Here, a guy had a mental health injury. And we took his title away from him. Right? So to me, Tyson Fury, who I personally believe might be the most talented heavyweight since prime Lennox Lewis. The Lennox Lewis who takes out Michael Grant. 
right? In my opinion, Tyson Fury is very much like Muhammad Ali, right? Very much like him. We question the power. He has better footwork than you can imagine, right? At times, he's inappropriate, right? Ali called Floyd Patterson, I believe, a rabbit. He called Sonny Liston a beer, right? We forget it. But I'm just telling you, right? An inappropriate heavyweight at times, a guy who says things that alarm the press, isn't new. Right? Here you have an Ali figure going up against a guy who, seriously, if you're looking at boxers and you're thinking about which boxers are out there trying to grab the biggest challenges, right? I'd say it's only Saul Alvarez, who, of course, has fought Floyd, has fought Miguel Cotto, has fought Golovkin once already, right, is fighting Golovkin again, it has fought Erislandi Lara. It's only Saul Alvarez who's out there trying to take the biggest fights like Deontay Wilder is, right? Wilder's idea of being heavyweight champion isn't to just focus on the WBC mandatory contender. No, this guy wanted Joshua. Didn't get Joshua. This guy is pivoted to the unbeaten lineal heavyweight champion. Right? Let's hope this fight comes off. It's going to be a doozy. I like Wilder by KO because that's what Wilder does. Right? But I'm going to hedge the play <laughs> with Fury simply to win. I believe it's possible I'm expecting Fury to be a sizable underdog. And quite frankly, in my opinion, Tyson Fury is the superior fighter. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.